Ross, we all catch our breath. Uh, firstly, uh, just an unbelievable afternoon slash evening slash night in Crow Park. Yeah, really tactical afternoon here in Croke Park, although it's, it's night time now. Uh, it has been uh, enthralling in terms of the, the tactical setups all day. Uh, maybe not the fast-flowing, high-quality football that people were maybe anticipating, but uh, definitely you could see the, the tactical switches uh, throughout the games, throughout the afternoon, the, the four teams, how they wanted to go about their business, and uh, fascinating stuff. And I think uh, probably the two best teams on the day went through for me. It's a lifetime ago now, but it was first started off with Kerry and Tyrone. A lot of people talking about the old enemies. We go back to the COVID-21 semi-final, last two All-Ireland winners. But Kerry really did a job. But we think we were chatting the out Tyrone, Tyrone almost. Yeah, and I think the key for, for Kerry, what seemed to be for, for me, was that at times they were happy to give Tyrone the kick out and uh, that meant that Tyrone had to break down 15 Kerry players to try and get a score. And uh, Obviously, with Cawley's style of refereeing, he does allow the, the cluster defence and he does allow that opportunity to steal the ball in packs. And when Kerry were getting were crowding their own sort of 45 and Tyrone were running into that congested area Kerry were turning the ball over winning it back and then attacking down the field and they just once they stretch the lead coming into half time they got it to get themselves three points ahead and right after half time the warning signs were there they won the throw in they went long inside the Shawnee O'Shea he was fouled offload to Clifford he finished in the back of the net but obviously it didn't count it was a point but it was obvious at that stage uh, Kerry were going to come out hard in the second half they knocked over the free and then after that they just took them apart point by point until uh, the first goal came and just uh, a brilliant brilliant performance from Kerry I would say that Tyrone didn't have that energy that they normally have uh, they've had to come through it uh, obviously not through the front door and in that first game in particular I think you saw the benefits of Kerry having the, the couple of weeks off being able to regroup and plan tactically and they came in here today with a very 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 sound game plan probably unlike Kerry very 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 patient allowed the other team to make the mistake and then counter attack at 100 miles an hour at times you know you look at that Kerry performance we talked about the turnovers they were huge but they had an absolutely warrior performance in the middle of the field from uh, Jim the Connor. I think it was 1-2 he finished up as well, but he was just immense against a very fancy Tyrone midfield as well. Yeah, and to be honest, I felt coming into the day that with all the criticism of the Kerry's midfield, that today would actually suit them because they, they really came in today as underdogs himself and Jack Barry and all the talk was about, you know, a Kennedy and uh, Kilpatrick, their ability to get forward, their ability to get scores, be dangerous in the opposition's half and Kerry midfield were, were superb today and uh, credit to them because they've taken a little bit of criticism and uh, they've shown us today that uh, they can be as good as what's around when they need to be. Then it helps when you have a player like David Clifford who's able to do that outrageous piece of skill to set up the second goal. Yeah, it was brilliant. Just heading towards the sideline, swivels, uh, knocked it on, and then it ends up with Shawnee O'Shea with a really composed finish. Uh, takes his time uh, before blasting it into the net. Just really, really good play. And listen, that's why uh, they're, they were All Ireland champions. That's why they look like they've timed their, their peak. But the key thing about Kerry is their six forwards all look like they could score at any one at any one point in time and uh, they're dangerous they're up and running and that is a big big win for them today momentum wise Sean O'Shea as well you just could watch him strike a football all day long yeah I think he finished with maybe 1-5 some of his free taken today was from the top drawer some of the at, from distance 45 and, and beyond just uh, superb striking and from the very minute uh, he looked like he, he was up for it it was a real real a uh, real real dogged performance but uh, brought that energy and even when there were maybe seven eight nine points up coming down the stretch heading for injury time he was still shouting and roaring at uh, fellas to come back and get behind the ball and n even just not prepared to give away even a point at the end that was the Kerry mentality today and they were up for it and they they, they won in very convincing fashion Tyrone with the greatest respect never really got going today they were flat but if we look at Kerry now going forward are they at the level or is it wide open this year? Uh, sorry, for Kerry? Kerry to go further on here. Yeah, to absolutely, they are. They're into a semi-final now. Nobody's going to want to play them. Uh, they've put in, they've like against probably their, their biggest rivals in, in the last 20 years. Uh, they, they were superb today. And listen, semi-final... 
ca- with Kerry in that kind of form, just uh, nobody's going to want to. Nobody's going to want drum. And as I say, they have forwards that can score in any day. But their defence today was was superb too, and got their individual battles uh, really well and with more really well and with morally sweeping uh, it gives them that little bit of a little bit of a platform especially if the other team drop a man back as well if the first game was one sided second one really really wasn't no it wasn't it was it was tight right from start to finish i think everybody here in the press box is talking about the fact there was only a point in it all the way through in that game from start to, to finish uh, in terms of of the game itself it was played exactly on monaghan's terms they wanted it slower they wanted it more methodical in, in the build up they wanted to string the pass together try and get uh, get the game played in an attacking sense the way they wanted it and very clever of them they had a lot of games in recent weeks they slowed down the they slowed down the temp or the the pace of the game and they they picked off the scores that uh, suited them to pick off and really they have been a changed team since that Ulster semi-final defeat to, to Derry uh, they're, the way they're playing the game now is uh, in a way that suits them uh, they maybe don't have the, the forwards that are going to win ball inside huge big ball winners so they're not kicking the ball into the forwards they're being very careful about possession they're happy to hold on to it for two three minutes at a time to try and eke out that one very obvious uh, scoring opportunity and listen that game could have gone anyway Arma, you couldn't uh, you, you couldn't say that they wouldn't have deserved it either they, they stuck in there the whole way through but I just think I would say Monaghan deserved it on the whole because they, I felt that they were the ones in control of the game. They seem to push up on the Armagh kick out, create a lot of damage and just, in effect, really pin Armagh back. Armagh are so dangerous when they're free, free-flowing and attacking. But as you touched on, Monaghan never get them the opportunity to do that. No, they didn't. They were, they were really intent on, on pressing kick outs. And at times Armagh were as well. But probably the, the big thing was Armagh didn't take their goal chances when they, when they presented them. And uh, uh, Monaghan kept themselves in in the game and they kept themselves uh, as I say on the front foot that the way that they wanted to that they wanted to play it and you know for me just in in today a really for any young people watching watching the game today any young players you take David Clifford on one side today was a day when everything didn't go his way he had a couple of chances that normally we'd expect him to get but he kept going he kept creating chances for his teammates he kept shooting uh, and in the end it, it came good for him he eventually got his point from play he kept offloading the ball to the man in the best position he never rushed anything he never lashed out he never looked to get frustrated uh, really good sign of a guy that when it's maybe not going the way it it, it always goes for you that uh, he's st- he stuck in the game and he made sure that he was a constant threat and on the other hand mental strength Conor McManus it would be very easy for a guy of of what he's done in the game to be disappointed to be disillusioned to be not happy about not playing uh, over these last couple of weeks but he has shown that he's an absolute team player mental strength to come in today some of the scores that he kicked he got four in total uh, one from play and that massive free at the end uh, to to level it up for for um, Monaghan was just unbelievable and then his two penalties dispatched in unbelievable fashion into the top corners and for me that was the highlight of the day those two guys the mental strength of Clifford to stay going when things weren't always going his way and to be the ultimate team player and likewise for McManus uh, disappointment I'm sure not starting on, on the biggest game Monaghan has ha- have had this year uh, but to come in and to equip himself like that and to be a constant threat and to do the business for his team uh, two guys who've just put the team first and fantastic mental strength and uh, credit to them yeah that was a monster free we all thought I think when Rio O'Neill scored that which was it's going to be forgotten about now but it was an unbelievable score outside of the boot close to 45 yards out two and a half minutes into injury time but Monon, they never ever panicked they won the free and they didn't just go crazy they waited and they worked and they worked the move and Vinnie Corey described him as Monon's best clutch player ever and uh, entered the situation he did yeah and I think as part of that Armagh will be disappointed that they, they got the, that Rean O'Neill superb score and then they were defending that last free with everybody behind the ball and, and that's a disappointment for them but 
apart from Roscommon, who are excellent at it, uh, and I would rate Monaghan as just being a little bit better than them, when you need a score and when you've only one possession left, one opportunity left, Monaghan are able to eke out those eke out those opportunities. And they went short with the free. McManus took on his man, uh, won, it, won the free on the edge of the D there. Massive, massive pressure kick. But again, mental strength. Uh, Connor McManus, you'd back him all day long, even in the most difficult of, of environments there. And uh, superb stuff. It was so late into the night, I think even Hawkeye had given up and disappeared off home. That would have been controversial if the uh, potential, well, we did, we'll never know if it was wide or not. I have to say I thought it was wide first. But I then into, yeah, I, think the umpires, I think the umpires were, were, were kind of thinking along the same lines. They, for, to not give it in the first place, they obviously had their doubts. And I think it was the right decision overall and they, they didn't need Hawkeye in the end. But in terms of the officiating today, I thought it was really consistent uh, in the first game from Cawley. I felt, and the second game from Conor Lane, I felt as a neutral here today, every time they blew the whistle, it, it was what I was expecting. The consistency was brilliant for both of them. I know there'll be a, a little bit of uh, talk about the, the hit right at the end of, uh, of normal time there. Uh, our man may have felt they deserved a free. You can see at the end in the replays, it was shoulder to shoulder. I thought uh, just really good officiating and well done, uh, Conor Lane and uh, Brenda Colley. Before we get locked in here, we have to quickly talk about what was a remarkable penalty shootout. Yeah, some of the best penalties I think I've, I've ever seen. Uh, some brilliant, brilliant stuff. And look, at it's uh, it's part of the game. It has to be embraced. But I think it was 17 out of uh, 20 penalties scored. Uh, really tough on Armagh to lose their, their third uh, penalty shootout. But Rory Began with a superb save right at the win and to, to win it for his team. So uh, credit to Monaghan. They march on and semi-final awaits. Yeah, it's no surprises that the two clutch players who've battled so many times where there's been keeping in Division 1 or holding on in, in Ulster whatnot. But McManus and Began, they get big, big moments for the side. Yeah, exactly. And, and speaking of big moments, back when Monaghan were trying to fill the position of manager last year when they called upon Vinnie Corey, he stepped up, he put his name forward and he has taken this team uh, forward. They're in an All-Ireland semi-final. I'm thrilled for him. He's Monaghan true and true and he, he had the bravery uh, to take Monaghan when maybe they were looking like an ageing team. Uh, he's done a remarkable job with his backroom team and his, his brother obviously coaching in terms of Marty Corey and they've started to bring young players in there today and when you look at Gary Moan three points from play today magnificent performance and he dispatches uh, his second penalty as well so uh, credit to Monaghan they're bringing through their young players they played the game on their own terms today and they have themselves in an all earned semi-final It's been a remarkable day here in Crow Park for tomorrow is just to follow, follow suit all, all go again tomorrow let's see what happens